Okay, in this video we're going to actually spawn the explosion when the missile that the player shoots hits the mouse cursor where its uh, target location is. So let's get back to Unity here. And first thing I'm going to do, we're going to use this uh, Space Meteor Sprite. Later, we might change this to like Particle Systems or something that looks nicer, but I think this should work pretty good for a placeholder for now. So. We will scale this guy down again. Actually, you know what? This one we're going to want really small to begin with. Let's maybe, you know what? Even smaller than that. Let's try 0.05. Yeah, we'll go with something like that. So, you know what? We're going to rename this to Explosion. Or, you know what? Since we might have different ones, we'll call this Player mis Missile Explosion. It's very specific. We know exactly what it is. Uh, we'll drag this guy into prefabs. And what we're going to do is just create an animation clip on it. So easiest way, uh, just open the animation window. And you don't have to actually create an animator or anything like that. Just select it. Uh, go to the animation window, not the animator, and hit create, and it's going to do all that automatically for you. So we'll go to assets, make a new folder, we'll call this animations. And let's call this player missile explode. Okay, so we just put it into record mode, and we'll go, you know, we'll go with like, uh, you know what, this one's going to be a bit longer. Let's go here and we will scale this guy up into the scene we we'll use the scale tool and we'll just kind of eyeball this one and maybe we'll go like that big we can change this later if needed so so that's kind of how the animation's going to play you might need to make it a bit bigger and I think what we'll do is we'll set it to not loop yeah so we won't make it loop we'll spawn it when it spawns it'll play the whole animation and then it'll stay full size for a bit of time we'll set a variable that can uh, make it leave for however long we want it and then it'll destroy itself uh, later we can animate it or make it spin or do something weird during that time so it doesn't look as boring but I think that should be good so let's just make sure all that's applied to the prefab we'll delete this guy and most of this is going to be back in our cursor controller so what we're going to do oh actually no this will be in the player missile controller Okay, so we got a speed variable. We're gonna do game object and we will get, uh, you know, I'm just gonna call it explosion prefab. Okay, and we'll just go to the prefabs. Okay, so on the player missile, we'll drag in the explosion. So it's got that. And what we'll do on update, we will do if transform.position. Uh, I guess we'll do, we'll try it equals to target. We'll see, we're going to have to set a variable for like some leeway. So when it's, you know, within a certain range of the target, then it'll go. But we'll try it for now. What we'll do is instantiate again. We'll do explosion prefab. We'll do it whoops, at transform.position, so where the missile currently is. And again, no rotation. So we'll do that. And you know, at the same time, we will destroy this missile. So we'll just say destroy game object and that'll destroy the, the missile right after it creates the explosion. So let's test this out. What's going on here? 
Oh, because it's a vector three, so we can do. Um, I think I can cast that to a vector three. I've never actually tried that before, but let's find out. Okay, so that's working. Uh, the animation's not too bad. Yeah, that seems to be working. Okay, so let's go back in here and we will make a script on the explosion. Let's do, um, no, we'll just call it self-destruct. There probably is a lot better ways of doing this, but this will be easy. So, you know what, on start, as soon as it starts, uh, you know, we'll make a variable, utilize field, private float, We'll call it destroy time and you know, we'll make it one second for now. So it'll explode after one second. Then we'll just do dis we'll do destroy. And as soon as you call this on the game object, you can actually put in a time right in it. And so if we do destroy time, this will call it as soon as the game object's created, but it won't actually destroy the object until this amount of time passes. So let's try this again. Yeah, that's not bad. We'll have to do a bunch of tweaking, but it's coming along. Okay, well, we'll leave that as, uh, you know, we'll move these scripts into scripts and then we'll leave that for this video and continue on to the next.